Uh, Microsoft has announced, uh, I'm sorry, they've finalized their acquisition of Bethesda, the publisher and owner of development studios responsible for titles such as Fallout, The Elder Scrolls, Dishonored, and Doom. Uh, effective as of last Friday, 20 iconic Bethesda titles are making their way to Xbox Game Pass, including Dishonored, the Doom series, uh, Fallout's New Vegas 4 and 76, Prey, Rage 2, the Elder Scrolls series, the Evil Within 1, not Evil Within 2 for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah that, uh, that's weird as hell. The Wolfenstein series, Sans, uh, New Colossus, and before I go on, uh, most of this is, is, is most likely due to just um, contracts with other... Um, with other platform holders so uh, it, it's safe to assume all these are still going to be coming to xbox they own them now it's just a matter of time um this is ultimately a net gain for game pass users and adds value to the service in form of day one game pass releases but obviously it's also a negative for those that don't have access to game pass whether it be through xbox consoles uh pcs or have like a strong enough um strong enough internet to stream it via their android phone you can't do that on a on an iphone now um sorry uh fuck where was i also the messaging from phil spencer and microsoft as a whole has been uh vague as to whether titles won't be coming to sony consoles uh with a statement confirming that uh quote some new titles in the future will be exclusive to xbox and pc players and they spent 7.5 billion dollars on this so uh, I guess and the, I'm going to be playing whatever the new Skyrim, or not Skyrim, whatever the new Elder Scrolls game is on my PC. Dude, I can't wait for Skyrim 2 to come out. Shit's going to be hype. Skyrim 2. <laughs> um, what, are, what are some of your guys' thoughts in general about Game Pass, um, Xbox? I think and... it was... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, I was just I was going to say that this means... Microsoft owns Tango Tango Gameworks now, which for those who don't know is Shinji Mikami, aka like the father of Resident Evil. It's his indie studio. Technically, Microsoft owns that now, and he's actually been he actually recently came out and said that this is a huge win for uh, Japanese titles coming to Xbox now, since the Xbox mm. over Japan is not very it's not a very much popular console. Uh, also, this means we're most likely going to get like something like the Evil Within Three, since Microsoft is funding it. Oh my god, I'm excited! <laughs> and, um, um, but yeah, like like this is a huge win for like uh, Japanese gaming in on the X Xbox. Now they own this company, so this is a big thing because now we could see more Tango Gameworks titles because their titles never really sold the best. They always had a like niche audience and they always got like solid scores, but they never really sold super highly. I want to hammer that point in specifically, and even aside from Tango, it, it applies to, I, I want to say, like, even specifically, like, Arcane games, uh, Dishonored and Prey, like, those are very highly critically pl- praised games that didn't sell that great, and with them being under Game Pass and having funding from Microsoft, like, like the whole purpose of, um, of, these distri- of these distribution platforms, whether it's Netflix, Amazon Prime, whatever, it doesn't matter how much they sell, it's about adding value to that platform. So this gives stability to those games to so like now we can actually get a Dishonored 3 without having to worry about like is this game going to sell or not. So it's ultimately um in this aspect it's absolutely an, an ultimate win uh in terms of like hey you can get these great games like they pro- they would not exist without Game Pass. So fuck yeah. I uh, I have the evil within now. <laughs> I have never been I have never been more excited to be a PC gamer. <laughs> <laughs> and almost every single one of these is on PC. I think there's like maybe one or two exceptions, but uh, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me look at the Game Pass Twitter account and find the exceptions really fast. Yeah, I have it right. So, just keep... I... so the only one's not coming to. Okay, so Fallout New Vegas is only going to be on console. Uh, Morrowind is not available on the phone. Oblivion's not available on phone. And the Elder Scrolls Online is on film. But aside from that, everything else is on everything. That's, uh... It's fucking it's amazing. Just... Like, I, I know we already, like, echoed it to, like, the fucking ends of the earth, but Game Pass is the best fucking value in gaming. And, like, you don't need an Xbox. You can have a PC. You can have your phone. It's... Right? It's insane. It's just so weird to me that we live in a time where you can play an MMORPG on your phone. Hell yeah. Um, I, I, actually, what, actually, one point I forgot. Um, 
you can look at a game like the last of us Two, where that game would not have like the insane amount of production value the amount of resources the amount of time for the publisher in this case sony being like yeah just take all the time in the world we're going to keep funneling you money that doesn't happen when you're just a regular third-party studio making games if uh, Microsoft is going to be able to push those resources into these games because they want value to their platform. It's not about selling copies of that game. It's about getting people onto, I, I want to say console. Well, they're expanding beyond that. It's it's just Game Pass as a platform. True. And um, also, really fast, I just saw uh, they basically teased that that new People Can Fly Square Square Enix Destiny style game out Outriders will be coming to Game Pass mm-hmm. on day on day one. Also. So like Game Pass is on a fucking roll. Like, like I like I will say it's one of the best things. I'm glad I signed up for a couple of months ago because it's how I'm able to play Man of M- Man of Madon without having to pay for it. I just wish they would put little hope ups in mm-hmm. for that. What does everyone think of? What does everyone think of the potential negatives of this? Uh, so like obviously, if you're if someone's like only a Sony console player, like sorry, like guess- the Fallout Four, you might have loved it, but you're not getting Fallout Five. Yeah, that's honestly the one thing that kind of not really pisses me off, but ticks me off because Bethesda has a fuck ton of player base on Play PlayStation. Like it totally true. does. Yeah. And if I if I remember correctly, Evil Within One and Two sold better on PlayStation in both like in in all ter in all ter, ter- territories. I think that's basically every multi platform game too. Well, also just like the fact that Bethesda games, I think, just sell better on playstation so like and of course i've i've talked to a couple people about this and i like, go oh, well that's not really losing money if like microsoft's funding them that's a lot of people that aren't going to be playing your games so, like i know so many people who own a ps5 or who own a ps4 who don't own a series x or don't own a pc they don't have like a gaming pc yeah. like there's a lot of people that only have a playstation as a gaming console and then then may- maybe they have like a laptop or like a macbook or something for business but that's about it i think the yeah, key so- thing for me about this is like yes you can be like like yes you can be excited that these games are all coming to game pass or, and the, any future titles are going to be day one game pass be excited for that be excited for these games like Dishonored 3 going to be able to exist. Be excited for like all these resources being pumped into them to make them better games. You should not be excited that these games are exclusive. You should not be happy that like Timmy down the road just can't play it now. Like, haha, fuck yeah. you, Timmy. I think, I think when you're a kid or you're a teenager that, that you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in the whole console wars thing and be, be competitive like oh f you you you're an xbox player playstation's better no xbox is better blah 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 but it's like at the end of the day like what you just said when you're an adult and you realize the business side of this stuff it's not a player forward it's not a it's not a for the player benefit that these games are exclusive plus plus you it's know. not that great since Microsoft's trying to make them seem like the good guy. Be like, oh, we're still going to honor contracts that had Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo launch on PS5 first. That doesn't make you the good guy. If you can, if you can, that's just those so- contracts to go. You can, re- you can release fucking Skyrim Four on the place on, on the on, on the PlayStation Five. You can release whatever the fuck is that Todd Todd Howard game. Uh, oh, that space one. The one that keeps leaking every every other week. Um, mm-hmm. What is it called? Uh, Outriders, the one you mentioned. No, uh, it's it's Starfield. It's the next Star Starfield. Thank you. You can release Starfield on on place on on PlayStation Five, or do the thing where it releases on the Xbox for the first five months, then drop it on on PlayStation after. It's like them. It's like people are like, oh, well, at least they're honoring the like contracts that were already there. No, that's just a legal that's, thing. That's, like that that happened with. That's um, the only reason they're doing it. What was it? The outer outer worlds when they bought when they bought um Obsidian. Like yeah, they had to honor that because it's just a contractual stuff. But yeah. like honestly, I don't blame Xbox for wanting to keep these games exclusive. They want people on their platform. But like as a player, you should not be rejoicing. Like oh my yeah, God. my PlayStation friends can't play it now. If if like they could yoink Deathloop, they would. They would yoink that in a fucking mm-hmm. instant. They'd be like, nope, that's officially a series a Series X exclusive. That they could do it with like Ghost. Ghostwire Tokyo too. Going get drop a major Japanese title on the Series X first, but but the fact they're doing it, that's not a good thing. That's literal legal shit. That's because whatever money they offered Sony to break out of the contract, Sony was like, "Fuck that." 
They were like, mm -hmm. they were like, no, we are keeping these games. At least we have Final Fantasy VII. Y'all are never going to get it. Yeah, I see. That's the thing is that they could have. They, they, I don't know. I don't know what their contract is with Square Enix. But with like some games, it's it's like, oh, this is on Xbox and PlayStation. But with other games like Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's just a PlayStation game. That's why I was con I was confused when they put Kingdom Hearts 3 on the Xbox and the PlayStation. But then that just sort of opened the floodgates for all of the Kingdom Hearts games to go on yeah. to Xbox like, and to go on to PC. Let's so. let's let's just be real, and I'm gonna go off on a limb here, but this is kind of a smart limb. The reason why so uh, the reason why Square Enix has not released Final Fantasy VII Remake on the X Xbox is they probably sold next to no copies of Kingdom Hearts Three on the Xbox, probably all on place on PlayStation. Let's just be you, honest. Well, you want to know why? So you want you want to know why? Because most people because because one Kingdom Hearts from the beginning has only ever been on PlayStation, so they. Could Kind of screwed themselves on that end. If they had they released did. Kingdom Hearts onto the Xbox and PlayStation from the very beginning, which they would have never done. I mean, that, that that's the other weird thing where just like yeah. even third yeah. party, not even first party, a third party Japanese developers, they just weren't making ports for Xbox because it wasn't big in Japan. They just did not give a shit about it. It mm -hmm. was it was only when Microsoft started sending dump trucks of money to them where they said, hey, we we want your games on Game Pass because a lot of people use Game Game Pass now. But, you know, Final Fantasy seven, eight never come into the Series X. Yeah. They are going to have to wait till that till, till that fucking collection's over when we're all 60. I think I one day I want to say Fantasy one more thing. <laughs> I want to say that there's. There, there has to be some sort of sociopolitical mumbo jumbo involved because obviously it's it's a fact that Microsoft is American and Sony is Japanese and so there's like there's a lot of like American pride or like Japanese pride and there's just like the meshing of the meshing of uh, games and consoles it gets very sticky and very political and it's like frustrating. Also, also so. the fact it's been like okay, so like I, I'll say it's been easier. It's been as hard as it is here, but it's been somewhat easier to get a Series X in in Japan than it has been here. Because no one wants because, it there. Yeah, people don't want the <laughs> Xbox over there. People literally crowd a tiny electronic gaming store to get a play a PlayStation more than they'll crowd a tiny electronic store to get a X. Xbox. That do we know? Do, oh, is it is it because there are more Japanese based games available for the PlayStation than there are for the so, Xbox? I don't. I like. I I swear. I read why there's a reason why people want the PlayStation more. I don't remember it, and I don't want to say something out of my butt, so I won't. Mm -hmm. But I know that there's like actual reasons out there as to why the X, X, Xbox doesn't really sell. Um, like before we move on, there, there's just a couple other points I want to touch on. Uh, where did I put it? Um, a I one. You don't need an Xbox. I don't need an Xbox, but I want an Xbox. I don't need it, but I want it. It's, like, it's that SpongeBob episode. Where he's just standing there, all dehydrated. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I need it. Yep. Um, point one. Uh, another added benefit. Uh, but this is obviously going to be a long term, and it's going to be a lot of. Uh, growing pains uh this is ultimately a very substantial um incitement to competition for sony where they're gonna like if, if people can't get like a skyrim on a skyrim equivalent on on sony consoles they're either gonna have to buy another developer or they're going to have to invest the resources into a new studio to to build one from the ground up so if more if better games come out in order to rival uh the elder scrolls or, or in, any game that under Bethesda's umbrella, really? that's that's ultimately well, a good thing. Rival the Elder Scrolls. Look well, at you, you El tiny one El child. Elden, Elden <laughs> Ring. Elden Ring. See, Elden Ring looks like it might be that equivalent. Well, that's coming out on the Xbox. You, you see, Sarah, they they, they could have done that. Wait, is that? But, but they 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 missed their window to get I fucking Obsidian. The uh, advertising rights to that game. Yeah, Elden Ring. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm sure it's coming to PlayStation Five, but they have the advertising but, but rights. So. They have the they, they have the ad rights. They well, have the, who? Like, 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, point- I, right. I mean, good job on that, Microsoft. That thing got fucking dropped like a bad habit a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, point two. Um, I I swear we're not sponsored. If if, if Microsoft, if you want to sponsor us, go ahead. I'll, we'll, I'll put I'll put a giant Xbox. Yes, I just wanted Xbox. Um, be the new Gears of War spokes spokes spokesperson, I, please. I I will tattoo an X on my head. If- please don't. <laughs> oh lord um i i want to definitively say uh game pass is definitely looking like it's the future and like when you compare it against um sony's strategy for their first party games where they're considered like premium titles where like they're 70 dollars 70 dollars is a lot to ask from people especially i know we're kind of getting towards the tail end of the pandemic or whatever but 70 dollars either way is still a lot of money Compare that to Game Pass, where you're paying like ten dollars a month, and you're getting all these games day one. You have this entire backlog. Um, Microsoft is winning the the value war, like already. I have not and, paid for an X for an X Xbox game in months. <laughs> I just and, doubt exactly, it. and exactly, and that's what I loved about. Like I, I told my um, I told my brother, I was like, hey, I was like, you know, you can just get xbox game pass right and like on your pc and just play the medium you don't have to buy it and shuck out you know 50 60 bucks for the game he's like yeah but it it looks like a really good game so i think i'm i think i'm just gonna buy it and plus you know you're you're paying more for game pass than you are for the game i'm like okay but like not if you buy game pass for a whole year or whatever you know Mm -hmm. like i don't know it's like his argument was weak so um and and what sarah just said it's like talk about talk about like living in the moment because like you don't technically own the game but you still get to play it all the way through you get to play all the content like you would if you bought it you still have the option of buying it if you actually want to own it digitally without having to constantly re-up your your xbox game pass but at least you get to play the game pretty much for free I mean, if you compare it to uh, to Sony's uh, PlayStation Plus, this is like basically that's not basically the same price, but you're getting more out of Game Pass than you are PS Plus, and you still get like the games with gold and everything too. Yeah. Also, and and, uh, and if you like the game that much, then you can. If you like the game that much, then you could just buy it, and then you'll have it forever. You know. Plus, pe- people seem to forget that Game Pass has EA Play attached to it as well. So you get the entirety of of EA's library. Titanfall. That means, Ooh. That means like all the Dragon Ages, all the Mass Mass Effects. I I wouldn't be surprised if the fucking Legendary Edition shows up on there. That'd I'm be cool. Baffled if that doesn't show up on there. So like you are literally like I'm literally playing Dragon Age two right now because I downloaded it off Game Pass. So it's like it's it's. Like, it's such an insane fucking deal. Like, it's crazy. It's mm. nuts how much money that you are saving. Again, I've not bought an Xbox game in months. I downloaded the medium. I didn't buy that shit. I'm glad I didn't. Same. Like, I feel <laughs> like if I, if, I, if I had bought it, I wouldn't have lasted as long as I did. I would have been pissed. I would have been like, I wasted my money on this. Like, I would have been legitimately angry. So, plus I, plus, I think it's a good way for you to try games that you might have never tried. I would have never played the Outer Worlds. Never played the Outer Worlds if it wasn't on game. It's it's game definitely game. it's definitely a it's definitely a um, gratification guaranteed sort of deal with Xbox Game Pass because if you are if you play a game and you don't finish it and you don't really like it, well, no harm done. You just wasted yeah. maybe maybe an hour or two or a few hours, um, you know. And, and, but if you really like the game, then fan freaking tastic. You can continue to play it. And if one day you choose to be like, ah, oh, you know what? I don't want to pay for Game Pass right now. Uh, you can always just go back and buy that game because you love it so much. It, you know, it's it's really it's really winning right now um xbox xbox's uh, or microsoft's ecosystem in general um so sony sony either sony either did one of two things with the whole ps5 and and it's its own ecosystem either they are just basically shucking out the ps5 for one last hurrah in the console wars um or they get their shit together and they actually focus more on their ecosystem 
Which I think they're starting to do with their like gold collection because there's some sweet ass games on on the gold collection, mm-hmm. especially with God of War just getting its PS its PS5 update, which is supposedly fucking nuts. I have yet to try it out, but supposedly it makes that game oh, it did? better. Which is oh my god, I think I think it's just I think it's just 60 FPS. I don't know if they added. No, I think I think they added a graphics and and or a performance mode to it. I think they had that in the because I played on PS4 Pro, so they have that. So you can basically play in resolution mode from the PS4 Pro, but you get the frame rate benefits because you're on stronger hardware. I mean, I, best I of both worlds. To it makes it look. Fu- even fucking better so it's like those games on that gold list are solid fucking oh titles. i, I, I almost forgot yeah first world problem is as cool as like this playstation plus collection is how is as amazing as game passes like i'm looking at, at all the games that are coming specifically from the bethesda deal i'm just like yes this is so amazing and then i'm just like fuck i already own all these fucking games yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. it's like it's like oh i already played all of these that these was are like, me with the like, this, the like evil evil within i'm like i've already played this this is where this is where we hit that wall where we're like well we've lived for over two decades uh almost three decades for some of us um and we're getting to the point where we've played a lot of games that have already been released so a lot of these mergers a lot of these things that are happening are more beneficial to the younger crowd who are just getting into gaming because they've never played these older games or to people who have like who played maybe dragon age inquisition first and never played the other two Mm-hmm. And now the other two are on Game Pass because of the EA Plus collection. Right. Because like, just, I know just... that's what I'm doing with, uh, with uh, Dragon Age 2. When I was younger, I never got that far into Dragon Age 2 because I just never really understood it. And that sounds weird. But now I'm replaying it now because I have fucking over 400 goddamn hours in, 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 in Inquisition. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I can finally play this and enjoy this for how I enjoyed in, in, in like Inquisition to be. So it's like, it's great for stuff like that. But yeah, like I already played all these fucking games. <laughs> Let's see. We should pr- we should probably move on. Um, so we, have, we probably have time for because I know everyone wants to talk about what they've been playing, and there's fear of us, so we can dedicate more time to it. 